In this video, I want to show you how I reload cartridges for 110 film. Like I have a process down, and I, I just it's probably going to be, be an evolving process, but uh, but I do have a process, and it works so far. Um, so I'm just going to you know go ahead and, and share that with you. So what you'll need is some old cartridges uh, that you can practice on, and I would you know recommend getting a couple of them. And um, thanks, I want to give a quick shout out to Tony from Anthony's Expired Film. He sent over a, a bundle of old expired cartridges that I could kind of work on and, and try to, to get this uh, down. Um, and, you know, thanks to him, I, I was able to uh, practice a couple times and, and I did I did bust a, a bunch up. Uh, but I did, I came away with a couple that, that you know, are, are reusable and they work. So, uh, so thanks to him. What I've come up with is I, I split these. Oops, I split these in half so I can reuse them. Uh, later in the video, I'll I'll take uh, a complete uh, cartridge and and try, you know, try my best to to open it up on camera so we can kind of go from there. But uh, just to give you the rundown, this is you know how how I would do it is crack crack, and then you go and you you split the welds, and you want to keep everything intact because this is what we're going to use to, to basically reload um, your, your film into it. Now, the reason that I have two here is I have uh, different ones rated for, for different uh, ISOs. And on the side of the cartridge here, you'll, you'll see that it's a little bit different. One has a tab, okay? And because the, the Auto 110 can read as, uh, I, I believe it's 80 and, and 320, it's like a high and a low speed. So this, this tab right here, if it's broken off like this, completely removed or even removed up, I think halfway, it'll read at a higher speed. So that's what I've done here is I've opened up two cartridges. I've made one for a lower ISO speed and then one for a higher ISO speed. And the only thing that, that differentiates those is this little piece of plastic that's going to depress on a, uh, a little nipple on the inside there. When it comes to sourcing your film to reload, uh, you can do it a few different ways. Uh, one way is to, to cut down some larger film like 35mm or uh, 120 uh, There's a guy on Etsy, uh, pretty pretty cool setup, and he'll custom make for you, you know, whatever um, you want, whether it's a 35mm or it's a 120 or whatever. Uh, I'll link that below. That's one option is to cut down some larger film. Uh, but what I opted for was to just use some 16mm, and um, I just got a tin of it, and then I... Um, in the dark, obviously, I don't want to open this up and, and blow the whole run, but um, I'll just, you know, use that, and I found that's a little bit easier. Uh, technically, this is reversal film. It's, it's not negative, uh, but, um, but yeah, I just cross-process it, and um, so I, I just went with a small roll for now. So as far as getting everything loaded in the cartridge, uh, it's, it's really important to get yourself set up in the light first. Um, so this way when you're in the dark and you're fumbling around, uh, it's just it's a lot easier for you. And the first thing that I do is I take the old section of film that I've removed from the, the canister or the cartridge and I tape it to the table so I can measure how much I need from you know whatever I'm using whether it's you know cut down piece of you know 120 whatever it is I, this gives me an accurate measurement and that I can feel I don't have to see the measurement I can kind of feel it hold whatever it is here and then stretch it out take some scissors cut it off and, and I know it's going to be about the, the length and you don't have to do this is 24 exposures you don't have to do 24 exposures you can do you know more you can fit more in there but uh, but just to kind of give you a guide of how long you need, uh, that's what I do. Also, you're going to want to get your, your tape set up. Uh, I found that electrical tape is, is really the, the best way to hold the, you know, your film you know, onto your spool. So get that, and you want to cut a piece in half so it's not too large. Like that. Uh, make it easily accessible. Put it on the edge of something. So you can just kind of feel and grab it. So I do that. Um, make sure that your cartridge is easy access. You kind of know where it's at. And I'll also take the camera that I'm going to load and I bring it in the dark as well. Uh, 
good point to know is, you know, make sure you're taping over the, the back of your window because this isn't exactly light tight anymore. Um, so I'll, I'll get this ready, kind of open up the back. That's ready to go. So from this point on, we're in the dark. Okay, and the first thing I'll do is I will uh, grab my film and I'll, I'll measure and, and cut my film. So we're going to say that, you know, this piece was in this tin. Take it out, take it out, whatever. Okay, and then I can stretch this out by feel next to this 24 exposure roll. And then I can cut it wherever I need. Um, you don't have to do 24 exposures. You can get a couple more in there. Uh, but anyway... Once you get that measured and cut, okay, we're still in the dark, obviously. Okay, then you're going to take your piece of electrical tape that's cut down and then stick it on the end here. I've tried scotch tape. Uh, it doesn't work as well. Electrical tape is, is definitely, you know, the way to go. Okay, so once you've got your tape, okay, then we're going to move to the other end and we're going to need to roll this other end up. So we get this super tight. I kind of make a little bend in the end here. It's really no big deal. Uh, just kind of helps to get that started. A little bend. And then I just kind of roll it up like that. This is so fiddly. It really is. I wouldn't worry about, you know, all your... You might want to wash your hands so you don't get a whole bunch of smudges and oils on it. Uh, but if, if you're shooting 110 you're not going for the utmost in quality <laughs> you know what's <laughs> a couple smudges here and there okay keep rolling it keep rolling it okay almost there alrighty so you're gonna to wanna to keep finger pressure on that to keep it in a coil okay then we're gonna feel around we're gonna pick up our open cartridge we're gonna pop this in one side Okay, it's going to stick out. That's going to roll over to the other side. Okay, connect that tape. And so you want to make sure this isn't going to fall out. Okay, and then we're just going to advance this until it's wrapping over itself like that. Advance it until the film is nice and tight. So this way there's no way that when you advance it, it's going to come loose the tape is held by another piece of film okay so we have it here take the top there it is got it okay all right so it was like this now we're going to flip it we're going to feel for our camera slap that baby in there Close it up, and you're good. You can turn the light on now, and uh, you can go and you know shoot your your 110. Uh, obviously, you know advance that a couple times. Boop. Alrighty, so we're back. We've gone out. We've had a blast. We we shot our 110 cartridge. We shot our film and our camera. And we're super, we're super stoked to get it out. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take a moment to complain <laughs> about this horrible thing called a Yankee Develop Tank. I read the reviews online, and, and people, people just shat on it and said it was junk. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, people are just they're just being negative and, and whatever. Uh, no, they were being honest. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> um, I've I've moved. It's it's a multi uh, multi size tank develop reel and uh once I, I don't know how i could get my fingers in here to change this um, just cheap plastic um, oh this is awesome check this out it comes with a twizzle stick that doesn't twizzle like, like what what even really guys come on so Anyway, that's that's my my unhappiness with this tank. I would not recommend it if you can find an alternative. Um, I spoke with a friend on Instagram, and he uses a, an old Minolta, Minolta tank, um, so I have an eye out for for one of those, like Minolta 16. 
but uh, but yeah I very very disappointed with this um, I wish there was another option but um, anyway I digress so let's get this thing loaded uh, this obviously you're, you're gonna have to do this in the dark when you get this out but just like loading the film I want to get everything set up to give myself uh, just an easier time so I get everything set up lined up I will turn off the lights okay everything will be shot I go ahead and I open up my camera that'll usually be snug in there because it's split open it needs a little bit of a whack and then everything I split it apart like this nice and easy and obviously I didn't shoot this so it's still stuck on the other side but pop this out the tape would be stuck on here I would have to remove the tape okay and then you go ahead and get everything loaded in the dark oh I hate this tank I hate it I hate it I hate it I hate it I hate you I hate you I hate you okay so that's fine okay there we go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay ah. okay safe to turn the lights on so I'm gonna clean this table off here and then I'm gonna to try to crack one open and just in real time show you guys how to open one of those uh, cartridges and hopefully we'll be successful but I can't guarantee it so uh, so we'll just we'll see how it goes and yeah alrighty so we're back tables nice and clean we have our sacrificial expired 110 film cartridge we have a razor knife and we're gonna need some black tape let's uh let's crack this guy open let's see about this does it have a smell no it doesn't have smell so <clears throat> you want to listen okay we're going to very gently twist it this way and twist it back you want a, a little bit of flex in it and you kind of want to listen for like a, a crack or a snap when, when you do it so uh, just try to be careful okay ooh like it okay so that's a good start what we need to do is we need to split these welds so there's there's welds it's kind of like melted together here here um, I also, I, I run my razor knife along the bottom here and here, and that usually splits them. So we'll try that. Obviously, sharp object, fingers, be careful, um, blah, blah, you know, you know the deal. Just continually make a groove. It's going to take a little while. You just got to be patient with it. I, like, tried to hulk them and I ended up splitting some. Okay, that felt like it's good. Try the other side. Right in the groove there. Light is so hard to see, guys. Uh, come on. Okay, starting to get somewhere. When you get it open, you can kind of like work it in there. Again, just try to be super careful. Maybe you can pry it apart. Yeah, yup, 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 yup. We got it, we got it, we got it. It's like exciting, man. This is exciting. Alright, do the same to the other side. There we go, baby. Come on. Come on. Oh, 
no, you mother... You, you, oh, mm-mm-mm. All right. Hope is not lost. See? See, I got a little, a little overzealous there. I think I got you. I think I got you. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, let it out. Let, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, buddy. Just like that. We had a little bit of a oops on this corner, but savable. Okay, cool. So, take your guts out, and, man, that baby's in there. All right. Put that over here. Your paper, and so we have this hole here, and I just take some tape. Okie dokie. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Man, I've had some casualties. I, I, I want to say like I've, I've busted out three, two, two or three of these, um, trying to you know get get some good ones. And like I said, I, I came across these these Vikings, and they just opened up uh, so much easier. The, the Kodak ones were were like Fort Knox, man. You just you couldn't get them. Uh, I mean, maybe you could. I I couldn't. It was just they would split apart, and uh, yeah. So, but these cheapos were were better. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much how how you, you split these cartridges open. And uh, as far as loading 110, uh, this has been my process uh, so far. Uh, but I'm totally open to to any kind of suggestions or if you guys have any tips, tricks, hints, uh, you know, hit me up, man, because I'm I'm all about that uh, you know that that easy life. So if if you wanna uh, you know drop me some knowledge, go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, um, I am working on a. Um, a review for the 110, the Pentax Auto 110. Um, absolutely love this camera, but um, I'm taking my time with it. I've been shooting with it since like late, uh, I would say November. I don't know. So it, it's been you know six months at least uh, that I've been shooting with it, and I'm just taking my time, you know, and kind of really getting a feel for it. And uh, I'm just going to put together a review of my thoughts and, and a bunch of uh, bunch of you know info on that. So uh, that's kind of in the works. And uh, hope everybody's well. And until uh, the next video, we'll see you.